Hello, I'm Alex Gill with Anime on Location, and we are here at MatsuriCon 2013 with John Swayze. Uh, how did you first get started in the world of anime? I tripped and fell. <laughs> uh, it was an accident. Actually, I did actually do that at a convention one time in uh, Anime North in uh, Toronto. I jumped off a stage at opening ceremonies and landed and thought, well, that doesn't feel right. And I had broken my foot and was in a wheelchair the entire convention. Uh, but, uh, so in 1996, I uh, uh, was doing a lot of voice work, a lot of on-camera uh, work, and had a band called the PC Cowboys, mm -hmm. which was politically correct country and western music. It was a comedy act. And we were doing a show, and this fellow by the name of Jason Lee, who's a voice actor, uh, said, oh, you ought to do some anime. And I was like, what's anime? And uh, he's like, well, let me tell you. So he showed, and his wife, now Amanda, was working at a company in Houston called ADV. And so I um, went over to ADV, they gave me an audition. I had no clue what this was. I was like, what on earth am I looking at? You know, But it was animation and I love animation. And uh, I, I kind of stumbled a little bit. So I literally did trip, if you will, but uh, kind of found it and started doing some wacky voices. And they were like, oh, that's great. And um, so started working there and, and had a chance to grow with them. And um, I, for what it's worth, you know, it's not, I don't know where they get this, but by doing that work with ADV and growing with them, I got to do tons and tons of shows. And uh, apparently Anime News Network mm -hmm. lists me as the most prolific male voice actor in North America. That and five bucks will get you a Starbucks. But I mean, it's <laughs> that is what it is. So, but anyway, free, free mocha frappuccino never hurt anyone. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, tell us about your role as Salvador in Borderlands 2. Salvador was a great character to play. Uh, he was fun. I um, I had so much fun playing that guy. Uh, the guys at Gearbox and uh, Ocatron, you know, Sabbat and, and the, his crew uh, were just fantastic. I mean, they're such a, such a joy to work with. Um, and, but that character in particular was so much fun. It, it was hard. It ragged my voice out. I'd go up there for two-hour sessions, and I'd have to, I didn't have to, but I drove from Houston to Dallas, and that's a four-hour drive one way. And I'd get up there, and we'd record it, and then I'd drive back to Houston. And the entire drive back, I mean, I, my phone would ring. I'm like, hello? Yeah, no, I'm fine. My voice is a little ragged. Because that voice just took so much, the performance took so much out. Because when you're doing video games, you know, you're doing like, you may have 400 cues to do. Now, you're not matching to any lip sync or anything like that, but you're going, there's 15 death things you have to make. You know, it's just like, how many more are we going to do? 20. So, anyway, but uh, it was a, such a fun character, and it's, you know, I'm glad to see it's been so popular. It's been a real uh, feather in the old camp, as they say. All right. Uh, now, how is it uh, playing the role of Lord Death in Soul Eater and being a part of the current Toonami lineup? Well, personally, I think I single-handedly saved Toonami. <laughs> uh, no. Um, no, you know, what a joy it is to be on TV. I mean, that's always what we shoot for in the acting business. Uh, but uh, Lord Death is a f another great character. Zach Bolton was the director uh, at Funimation, and um, I've done a lot of stuff with him. And when he auditioned me for that role, uh, I was thinking, I was, at the time, was working on One Piece doing Sir Crocodile, and it was kind of like Salvador where everything is like, you know, and I was like, so I'm thinking Lord Death, okay, well, Lord Death, right? I mean, I'm Lord Death, yeah. you know, it's like, that's really not the voice. Listen to the Japanese. So I listened to the Japanese, and I was like, oh, he's way up here, you know, and I was like, yeah, that works. Um, a lot of times when, you know, we do these animes, to me, it's very important to listen to what the Japanese actor did because we're recreating into, we're putting into English what they actually created from fresh. And uh, so in order to honor that, I think it's very, it's imperative that we try to stay as close to that voice as we possibly can. Instead of going, oh, I'm going to make it my own thing. It's like, no, 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 you're not. Somebody else has already made it. You just are making it into English. So you need to, uh, but you need to listen to what that actor did. And that's what we did for Soul Leader. And that's how the voice came out. So 
That's a quality I especially appreciate, so well, thank, thank you for you. thank you for your attention to that. It's very important, and uh, I was doing a convention uh, a few months ago in Toronto, and we had, it was a Japanese actress uh, there, and uh, she spoke no English. I mean, she had to have an interpreter. And um, but I was saying that at a convention, at a panel, and she was, you know, I could see the translator was like, da, 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 you know, whispering the thing. And when I said that, she turned to me and just gave me a big hug. You know, it was like, thank you, you know, because I mean, they're the artist, you know, yeah. and and we are too, and we do bring something to the table that's you know uh, important. But again, you know, they did create yeah. it, and we need to honor that. Yeah. So interesting because. I live in Houston, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I was kind of getting into this world of anime like a couple years after they had started. So I kind of grew up in anime with ADV, um, and I saw them. I mean, we went from a, a one studio facility to having five studios and two mixed rooms and, you know, just this enormous monster. And... Uh, it was it was just it was fun. I mean, it was a blast, and I didn't mean to stutter. A blast. It was just it was a blast, and uh, I, I you know I'm still working there today, and uh, it's you know a great great group of people, and um, who have a true love for this genre of entertainment. So um, I loved it. I love the people that are there, and that's all I can say about that. All right. Um, now. Have you had a chance to head back down to Houston and work with the new studios that have formed there? Well, as I said, I live in Houston, so I haven't really headed back. I live there. That's okay. Uh, and I am directing right there there now. So, um, yeah, so they're, uh, they're doing great. It's now called Sentai Films. And um, I'm doing several projects with them right now. I just finished directing a show called Nikomo, and I'm starting a new show called... Um, in two days, as a matter of fact, called Arcana Familia. It's uh, about an Italian type mafia type thing. Um, and uh, then I'm also doing some live action stuff with them. So they're they're uh, they're going gangbusters. I mean, they're just you know, there's more work than they know what to do with, and I'm, I couldn't be happier. It's great for uh, Houston. It's great for the anime industry in general, and uh, certainly great for them and great for me. So I'm thrilled. Everybody's receiving the benefits. All right. Yes, exactly. um, now, working as a director, uh, how does directing influence your voice acting and vice versa? How do they supplement each other? Um, well, of course, I started as a voice actor um, and then got into directing. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky. Uh, you have to really uh, wear whatever hat you have on that day. Now, at Sentai... Uh, the way that the process that we go by is we'll read the, the words on the screen, the script, and uh, if they don't fit, we'll change them ourselves on the fly. Not everybody does that, but you'll see it's like too short or it's too long or whatever. So we'll just make the adjustment and then the director will go, oh, that was great. And then he'll type in the, what we actually said. Because sometimes it just doesn't fit within the word, word the flappage. Um, but in general, like at Funimation, you know, when I go up there, I'm an actor. I'm not a director. And so I have to uh, really, you know, not try to direct myself. Let the director direct me, you know. But Because so, I'll say, you know, it would be a better idea if we did this. And they're like, no, it wouldn't. It's like, yeah, you're right. Sorry, what was I thinking? <laughs> Silly me. So, uh, you know, when I'm an actor, I have to be an actor. When I'm a director, I have to be a director. But it's, it's certainly been beneficial to... to to wear both hats. So. All right. Um, how much different is it working in radio and television uh, than working on anime or video game voiceovers? What differences do you notice bouncing between mediums? Um, well, it's just for one thing, it's it's really not apples to apples. I mean, it's apples to oranges. It's uh, uh, you know when I do I do a lot of voice work where um, you know the general public is never going to hear it because it's a safety video for an oil company or a pipeline company down in Houston we get a lot of that industry or we have a lot of that industry obviously and uh, so um, and doing commercials you know um, it's just different you know uh, for one thing when you're doing a voiceover for a commercial there's no any you don't watch any video you just do the copy and you know so uh, they're just completely different animals and I, I 
when I is when I first auditioned for ADV, I was doing quite a lot of voice work in Houston, and I kind of thought I was the you know, <laughs> look at me. And um, when I started doing anime, I had no idea what I was doing, and I really kind of fell flat on my face because it it is so different than doing the other stuff. But uh, I was able to finally adapt and and you know. Uh, get along with it, but they're just they're just different animals, but they're all fun. Love it all. All right. Um, are there any way fans can keep up with you online? Sure. Uh, you can check out my web page, which is johnswayze.com, uh, or you can friend me on Facebook. I am not a, uh, I haven't done the whole, this is my page and this is my fan page. It's just friend me and I'll friend you back. I really don't care. So, and I stay, I, I hear from fans every day and I, I'm, you know, sometimes I get a chance to uh, respond. Uh, sometimes I don't, or it's maybe, hey, I can't talk, I'm in the middle of something, because my life is very hectic. But uh, when I can, I enjoy interacting with them, and, you know, if it frankly weren't for the fans, and, you know, I'd just be a guy in a booth talking for no reason. <laughs> so I, I appreciate what they are and who they are. So, uh, yeah, Facebook me and I'll friend you. Do you have any final words you'd like to get to all those fans out there watching? Thank you all so much for all you do all you have given me uh, and um, I just I really don't know what else to say but keep watching and buy more stuff John Swayze it's been a pleasure thank you so much for well, joining thank us thank you very much man